Hey guys, I'm John with Hops and Brews, and what if I were to tell you I can turn any beer, like this one right here, into a non-alcoholic beer? So yeah, what if I were to tell you I can turn any beer into a non-alcoholic beer? And you're probably sitting there thinking, yeah, you just boil out the alcohol. Well, yeah, that's it. How come no one's ever done that? Well, you need to think about it. You have to boil it down. How long does it take? You know, uh, you have 6%, 9%, 12%. How long do I boil that out? Well, I was actually doing a little bit of research and found out that uh, alcohol boils at about 171 degrees. Uh, that is just below simmering level of water. And it takes roughly about 30 minutes to boil out 95% of the alcohol in your beer. So you should theoretically be able to take any beer just on a very low simmer for 30 minutes and you should then have non-alcoholic beer. But then, well, okay, you lost all your carbonation. It's warm. Did you accidentally burn them all? What's going on there? I don't think people have ever really tried this on a big scale. Plus, it takes 30 minutes to have a beer, you know, probably longer. And what happens if you're doing dry January and you have a fridge full of beer and you're just like, look, all the non-alcoholic beers taste horrible and all these beers taste wonderful. Why can't my non-alcoholic beers taste like this? Let's see if we can fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and simmer this beer down, cool it back down, recarbonate it, check the levels for ounces, and re-add any carbonated water that we might need to add back in there so it does come back at the proper 12 ounces. We should be removing whatever percentage in liquid volume out of the beer, so we need to add that back in. Okay, as you can see, I uh, have settled down and it looks like I burnt off about two ounces, which is ooh, a little bit more than I needed to. Let's now go ahead and pour this into a bottle, cool it down and recarbonate it, add any extra water that we need to to bring it back, see how it tastes. Okay, so we have our beer that we've extracted the alcohol out of, maybe a little bit too much, but okay, you know, it is what it is, first try. Let's go ahead and taste it as it is. I recarbonated it and it's nice and cold again. So this is what it should taste like, although it's got two ounces less of liquid in it, plus the alcohol taken out. Sounds good. Okay, this is actually quite darker than the original, and just to give you a reference, let's open up what the original looked like. Now, this is to be expected, as, again, we've concentrated, we've taken two ounces out of it. So it should look darker. And it does, it looks definitely darker. But that's okay, we're trying to go for taste here, too. All right, so let's check out what the non-alcoholic version of this tastes like to see if it tastes the same. I will state the aroma of hoppiness. Uh, this is Hop Valley's Bubble Stash Cryo Hop IPA. They use cryo hops in it, which if you know anything about beer, cryo hops have a very big, bold, juicy aromatic. And this is also a mosaic blend, so it should have a lot of aromatics. Unfortunately, a lot of the aromatics are now gone out of this. It just smells like malt. It tastes like malt too. I will state though, the body is a lot better than a lot of non-alcoholic beers. Now let's go ahead and try this original one. Oh yeah, there's hoppiness, there's bitterness, but not too much, but still it's nice there. It's bubbly, it's sweet, it kind of has a 
hint of bubbleguminess to it. But actually still overall not horrible. I, I do feel it has the same body consistency. Again, that's one of my biggest complaints about non-alcoholic beers is they're always so thin. This still has that body consistency and the sweetness. It doesn't have the hoppiness, but the sweetness is still there. But we are missing two ounces of liquid. So let's go ahead and pour in two ounces of carbonated water to bring this back to a 12 ounce beer. All right, so here I have two ounces of carbonated water and we're gonna dump it back into here and that should lighten it up a bit, but it's gonna thin the body out. So let's see what it does to the flavor. But first I wanna take another taste of this. Kind of to remind myself. And let's not dump all of it in because I took a couple sips. So I'm a, I'd be actually adding more liquid to it. But still, that, that lightened it up a hair. Although, like I said before, I think I burnt the malt just a little bit. So that might be where I'm getting this darker color. But it did lighten it by just a hair. But that's, that's not horrible looking. Either of them are not. I mean, if I got this, it's still fine looking to me. watered it down just a bit but it's still got a nice body to it but you know what we should check is how does it actually compare to a craft non-alcoholic version well we just happen to have that right here with athletic breweries free wave non-alcoholic hazy ipa uh, if you haven't seen my series on athletic brewing check out the link uh, i find them to be probably one of the best na craft breweries out there now this is a hazy, so it's gonna be a little bit different, but still, we should be seeing a body, maybe an aroma, what's gonna be the difference comparative. Right away, the color looks more like the original alcoholic IPA. The aroma, however, is actually more similar to this one. Now it's hoppier, but I smell a lot more malt but I smell more malt body in this like I do my non-alcoholic. Oh, see that's just a good body beer. I would say that that was a beer. I would have no complaints of that. I love Athletic Brewery. They're just a great brewery, check them out guys. Oh, that's a good beer. That's non-alcoholic. I get a little haziness, I get a little odiness. It's very good. And in comparison to my beer, it's not a hazy, it doesn't quite taste it, but honestly, this isn't bad. This is not a bad beverage. I could easily drink this for a non-alcoholic month. And I think that was the point I was trying to make. I can go and grab my craft beers that, you know, these are, cheap beers that, well, they're just as expensive, if not cheaper than some non-alcoholic domestics. Um, and I can get the flavors that I'm looking for. It does take a bit more effort though. You have to open up a can, simmer it for 30 minutes, have the equipment to recarbonate it and keep it cold. And that's a lot. But I do find that there's something to go on this. I wonder what a stout would taste like. I wonder what a bourbon barrel aged beer would taste like. I wonder if I actually took the time to control everything properly to see if I could make, say, non-alcoholic Bourbon County, Goose Island. Might be worth a shot. Anyways, tell me what you think. Think I should do that? See you guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media stuff. The links will be at the very bottom of the description. Uh, if you like this type of content, feel free to leave a comment about how good you like it. I will respond probably. Or should I try making some other beers non-alcoholic? What's your favorite beer that you wished kind of tasted like that to be non-alcoholic? Jammy Sour, Bourbon Barrel Aged Stout, maybe a barley wine, Gose, something like that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. See ya.